the stereotypes that are mainly in a smallholder tea farming is uh, that women, the way women are perceived, they perceive they're not able to achieve most things that men can achieve. So because of that, and because of the society, because the way they've been socialized, the women as well, they believe that kind of stereotypes that they cannot be, they cannot achieve as much as women, men achieve. And the men as well, because of the way they were socialized in that community, they believe that those stereotypes are real. So the way they conduct themselves, like uh, the way they go about their business, they go about making those stereotypes reality for both men and women. So the women would look down on themselves and the men would look down on the women and the women, and that makes the women not able to fully participate in the commercial um, farming as fully as to their ability. Stereotypes are commonly everywhere in the world. Each part of the world, each country have their own stereotypes. And in, in each country, you find different uh, areas in the same country having also different stereotypes about gender. So what we did as Warwick, we wanted to understand what sort of stereotypes are with the people that we're working with. The main reason of it was to understand how the women believe about themselves and how men perceive uh, the women. So the gender audit was just to understand the stereotypes that would be broken uh, the progress of our, our work uh, when we're doing gender mainstreaming in that area. So we had a set of questions that we asked for to both men and women of different ages, the elderly, the middle age, and also young. The questions were same to um, men and women. There were a lot of questions that surrounded the, the understanding of um, leadership on women and also whether the ability of women, how men perceive women in that society, whether they can be able to lead an association or they can lead, um, they can lead a business and how women perceive themselves, whether they are able. The most things that came out in the audit is that the women don't think that they can't um, they can't lead or don't think that they are not able. They don't think that they cannot uh, do as much as men do. But what brings them back is the same um, cultural beliefs that they in, that they have been socialized in. They are uh, socialized to let the men go first. So even though a woman is more capable to take a leadership position, cultural socialization that she has is that you have to let the man go first. That's respect, that's uh, you're being a good woman. So the woman would, um, would leave out uh, positions that they are able to do that. And uh, they will give away opportunities and they'll give away um, benefits that may work for themselves because of the belief that if I grab this, if I take this opportunity of a leadership opportunity, that means I am grabbing a man's opportunity because a man is supposed to be the leader of this. So this cultural um, socialization comes from that understanding that men are natural born leaders. They are leaders in the family, they're leaders in the society. So even if we have groups of uh, farming, uh, commercial farming groups, men are naturally leaders, even though some of them don't have the leadership qualities, but they'll just still be um, put in position because of the gender stereotypes that women are not good, are not born leaders, cannot lead. So we should put a man in the position. From the gender audit, Wallach worked with the results and tried to build any gaps that were there so that the women could believe themselves again to, to see that they can, be, they can lead the associations that they have, the, the commercial associations they have, and also they can make decisions and contribute to the society. So uh, that involved going through uh, some gender mentorship sessions with the women and the whole of the association the men as well. The reason we did with men 
was for them to uh, understand the gender mainstreaming that it's not, um, it does not mean that uh, women are taking over the positions of men. It just means that equality, like equity, you need to work together. Everybody is, uh, is capable. If he's capable, put them in the right position beyond their gender, beyond that this is a woman or beyond that this is a man. So um, we worked to, uh, to encourage women's agency because when only men have the, uh, the right to speak, only men have the right to make decisions, they are one way, they don't benefit everybody wholly. So when women are involved in that, when they see themselves that this is what we need, this is the development that we need to work for women, it works for both men and women because it's community development, which has everybody involved in it, other than women being participants, but not making decisions, just attending the sessions. So there's a difference when women have agency in um, it's their participation in making decisions that counts. The decision becomes more beneficial to the society and also more sustainable because they took part. It's different when they are participating, but they are just a crowd in the decision making. Wolek worked with men um, in, in the uh, Suwazi community, mainly on um, gender mentorship as well as uh, legal empowerment. So we use legal empowerment a lot to make the men understand that the gender equality is a legal, it's a legal requirement for them to be in the same equity, is the same positions as women. So mainly we touched on that and uh, to help them understand that um, because it's important for them to, to understand that we're not trying to change their culture. We're not trying to change the way their society uh, is ordered or the way their society is leading, but it's important for them to understand how they're leading the society. It's important for them to understand the legal requirements that everybody has the responsibility to, uh, to follow. So it helped them to see the reasons why the decision, the processes of uh, decision making that they have to have a female perspective of it. So if they're making decisions about the uh, community, making decisions about the farm, their farming association, what is the female perspectives to the benefits that they're trying to bring? Are uh, the benefits that they're trying to bring only answering the men's problem or they're answering the female problem as well? So if they see the way that the, the, um, the decisions that we're making are answering both the men and women problems, the agency is much stronger that way because it is answering what the society needs. So it was easier for them to understand in that way that when we talk about gender equality and agency and legal empowerment, we mean that the answers to the problems are looking both at, at both genders, are answering the problems of both genders.